Hi ladies, this is a follow-up video to my original where I first explained the concept of uh, the deconstructed journals, um, what they look like, what was my inspiration and my goals concerning them. Um, obviously we've been up and running for about three months and so some things that I had not anticipated have come up. Some of them we've already found solutions and we've taken care of them and others we are still trying to find some solutions. So I wanted to update you on some of the things that maybe we can um, try a little harder at and be a little more conscious of when we're doing our swaps whether it is the um, the journal pages or the other swaps that we're involved in. Um, one of the issues that has come up is that some of us still forget to sign our pages. It's um, to me personally um, I, when I go back and I look at my journals I'm not always going to remember who mailed it to me and it's really nice to see that they have signed it so that when I'm looking through it it reminds me of who sent that to me and as I look at other ones that they do you know you start seeing a trend in their art or maybe the progression in their art and it's it, it to me it just adds some value and some joy to the actual journal so I know that um, many of you whether it's because you forget or you're just being modest or you know, whatever reason it is that your signatures aren't on your pieces, if you would please, please remember to sign and make it legible. Let's not play, you know, where's Waldo and trying to find it in this intricate places. Put it in an obvious place, like right here. You can see how it's there and very obvious. And um, also a, another very important thing is um, your mailing of your actually your actual envelopes. I know some people, including myself, have been complaining about how long some of these things take to get to people. It's in you know even when you're just uh, mailing from within the United States, sometimes it's just taking a ridiculous amount of time. Most of us like to decorate our envelopes, myself included, but. I was told by um, the gentleman there at the post office that when you write right here over all of the art that you've just done, that the computer, it basically conf confuses the computer when it goes to the machine and it can't read the address. Immediately, if that happens, it gets spit out. When it gets spit out, from then on, things happen to your um, letter manually, which takes up a lot more time than if it had just scanned the, the computer. So he suggested that either you leave a blank space and write the address and do the art everywhere else, or if you already have your envelopes with all of the art, then just simply put some type of a um, sticker there where you can go ahead and write um, the address on there and it can be mailed. That is one thing that will speed it up and not make it be thrown off to be handled manually. Another thing that can make it be sent off and handled manually is if when you um, write the address, if you write on this bottom section or you write on this end section on the right hand side of your envelope the computer also does not read this so if you have like your zip code over here um, it's going to be automatically thrown out and it's going to be handled manually again down here is where they put the barcode and if you have part again of your address and your zip code down in here and they put that little strip of paper down there that has the barcode again they're not going to be able to read it and it's going to be thrown out and handled manually 
So these are just a few of the reasons why some of our things may be taking longer. We are putting things in the wrong place and it's not being just shuffled along through the computer system. It's going to be handled manually, which adds more and more time to it. Also, those of us that are in the United States and we are mailing out of the United States, um, it is advisable that we write documents only. I have had the habit of writing this down here. Again, that's wrong. That is going to be covered up with the barcode and again, it's going to be tossed out. So try to remember to put the documents only on this side. Um, return address. It's extremely extremely important that you put a return address either in the front or in the back. The reason being is that there is a lot of things that get lost. I personally have had several return back to me for one reason or another and if I had failed to put my return address it would have gone off to lost mail abyss and nobody would have ever seen it. I wouldn't have known what happened to it. The recipient would have never gotten it and it's just a mess. Fortunately, it was returned back to me. Either it was an error on my part or um, with the post office. Either way, it was taken care of. I was able to send it out again because I had the original. Um, another thing that um, is important is on the back. Please put down the group number because there are Sometimes groups that partners may be, let's say they're in group 10 and they're also one or two of those are in group 15. And if you get a, um, a page from them and there is no theme to that particular page, um, they're not going to know to what group to attribute that particular um, page that they're receiving. So please put the group number in the back that way when they get the page now it's their responsibility to put it within that group once they have received it also it makes it a lot easier when they um, go to the page of uh, the um, sent and receive files it's real easy they say oh I got mine from group 15 they go right over there they put a group 15 that they received it from so and so. It makes everybody's job a lot easier. Um, what else did I want? Um, yeah, the 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 file uh, that I was going to talk about, um, the sent and received. What I would suggest for a lot of people is because I know a lot of you are enjoying this and you're doing multiple ones and I'm sure this isn't the only group that you are involved in swaps. If you're into swaps, you're probably into a lot of groups that have swaps. So what I would suggest that everyone should do this, no matter how simple or how elaborate you make it, you need to make yourself a little swap journal. Mine here, it, I just put a bunch of these pages, I cut them out and just did a, a single stitch in there over done with and this is mine this is my go-to thing and I know where all my stuff is um, that's important for you personally to keep everything straight so it doesn't get confusing for you because when you start getting confused you get frustrated and then your frustration really all your joy is just not going to be there the whole point of all this is for you to relax and enjoy your art so the more things you do to make it less stressful for yourself, your partners, and myself. It's a win-win. Everybody's going to have more fun that way. Now, once you have made yourself your little journal, make sure that each time you are put in a group, you know, you put um, that information in your journal. In addition to that, um, in addition to this, you need to go to that files that says send and receive. It's very simple. It takes you a second just to go over there and say, yes, I received it or I mailed it out. It takes very, very little time for you to do that. And it takes an enormous amount of pressure off of me to try and handle all of these groups. Just to give you an example, here is, Linella is so sweet. She does all this on the computer for me. 
I just tell her what it is and she sets it all up for me and then I print it out so that I have a hard copy to work with. But just to give you an example, in the month of June alone, we have um, 20 swaps that are going to have to be mailed out by the first of not well the first of June and the fifteenth of June. So the entire month of June, there are twenty. Now you have five people in each group. That right there tells you that's a hundred transactions that are going on. And if you really get crazy and multiply it between each other, that's like five hundred transactions. So it's almost impossible for me to personally make sure that everybody gets everything they're supposed to get. That's where you, uh, in a group, is extremely helpful to me. And I rely on you guys to go over to that send and receive file and post over there. Because then at a glance, I just go, I look, oh, you know, four people have theirs. There's only one that haven't received. I keep an eye on that. If I see that nobody has received from that person, then I'll ask the group, hey, has anybody gotten anything from her? And they'll say yes or no. Makes my, my life extremely easy. So I just want to emphasize that I didn't put that file up there just to give you something else to do. I put that file up there to give me less to do because I'm doing that by multiples of five for each group. So you can see how helpful you are um, when you co cooperate in doing that. Now, one thing I've also noticed just recently, and I'm going to address it and hopefully it will put an end to it, is that people are joining... Um, some swap groups, uh, primarily the um, deconstructed uh, journal pages, and then they disappear. And then we have like say four in the group, they're extremely conscientious, they make their pages, they send them off, and usually they send them off early because they want to move on to the next um, theme and they're all enthusiastic about it. Then when the due date comes for everything to be sent out, that lone person is nowhere to be found. And now you have already sent them out your pages and you get nothing in return. Now obviously it's only going to happen one time because I'm not going to let that person join any more swaps, but that one time still hurts and it can be avoidable. The way that we are going to do this is starting almost immediately these groups, I am going to put all of you into a little private message group by the number where you guys can talk and exchange with each other ideas or you know questions, whatever you want to do, and have that little group. And if there is someone there that has not joined the group or has not joined the conversation or does not respond to you communicating with them, do not send them a page. Do not send them a page. They are no longer, for all intents and purposes, part of the group if they are not um, adding to the conversation, if they are not engaged in the group, you can assume they do not want to be a part of the group in the full sense of exchanging with you. So there's no reason for you to give to them. So this is fair warning to everybody that once I start setting up these um, PM private message groups among all of you, communicate with one another. Because if you fail to communicate, that says to me and the rest in the group that you do not want to be a part of the group, which means you will not be receiving anything from the swaps. I think that will prevent you feeling like you're giving and not getting anything in return. It'll put an end to it very quickly because you won't have to be messing with that anymore. You can still send them out early if you want because the communication should start early. And if you have a good feeling about this person that you go, oh yeah, I think everything will work out, well, send it out early to them. If they're someone that, you know, has never done a swap before, you don't know them from other experiences or other groups, well, hold on to it until it's close to the send date and see if that communication has continued. So I think that there's a good protection for all you ladies that are conscientious and are doing the right thing and we will slowly weed out anyone 
who is just here to take advantage of your art and your generosity. Um, what else? That may be it. If I think of anything else, I'll be adding to it. But I think that's it for now. So thank you very much. Um, make a journal. Remember how to post. Go to the set and save. And I think it will weed out all of our problems. Oh, and don't forget, sign your work. Alrighty. Thanks, ladies.